So this is a video highlighting the basics of when it comes to research methods. Things that we're going to cover are IVs, DVs, hypotheses, um, extraneous variables and all of the kind of nuts and bolts of what makes something a piece of research. So IVs and DVs are variables, that's what the V stands for. And this means that there's some sort of change going on with them. So the independent variable is the thing that the experimenter is in control of. This is the thing that you as a psychologist will be um, manipulating or altering to see some results. So let's say we wanted to see the effects of music on memory. The IV would be music. One group listen to music, one group don't listen to music. That is a change that we have made, and that's the independent variable. The dependent variable is the thing that we are measuring. In other words, it is the result. Um, so in the effects of music on memory, we will be testing memory in some way, shape, or form. So we alter the IV to see what effect it has on the DV. Which of these two conditions, music or no music, will improve memory scores? Um, so here's a couple of examples. A researcher is interested in whether older or younger people are more helpful. Drivers are observed at a junction. The number of older people, who are apparently over 45, and younger people, apparently under 25, who give way to another vehicle are counted. I'll give you just two seconds. Obviously, you can pause the video if you want to think about it longer. But the IV in this case would be the age of the participants, whether they were over or under 20, um, 25 or 45. Um, as this is what is changing between the two conditions. That's what's different. The DV would be how many of them stopped. We count how many of them stop at the lights. In this second example, do people work more eff efficiently first thing in the morning or later in the day? The pr productivity of workers making soft toys in a factory is compared between 9 and 10 a.m. on the morning shift and 7 and 8 p.m. on the evening shift on a given day. The IV, what's changing? is whether they were in the morning shift or the afternoon sh or the evening shift. And the DV, what we were measuring, the result, is the productivity. How many toys these particular people made. Um, C, participants are asked to remember word pairs, either by rehearsing the pair of words to themselves or by forming a mental image linking the two items together. They are tested being given the first word of each pair and then asked to supply the word with which it was paired. So again, the IV would be whether they are rehearsing the pairs of words to themselves or forming mental images. Those are the two options of what the participants did, the two conditions. And the DV, the result, is how well they did on that kind of memory test. Um, on the next slide, there's a few more examples. Um, IV on DV of these following hypotheses. So the IV, um, age will not affect performance on mathematics test. The IV would be the age of the participant. The DV would be their performance on a test. It's literally seeing if we make a change to something, what are the results? IV and then DV. Um, what's important throughout this is we opera operationalize things. Um, operationalization or something being operationalized is the process of seeing exactly how we are going to measure something. Uh, many of the concepts that we talk about in hypotheses, such as intelligence, aggression, um, happiness, um, exp and personality, are very hard to measure. W there are many different ways of measuring them. So what we have to b do is be specific in how we are actually measuring these things. So for example, if I go back a couple of slides, uh, do people work more efficiently first thing in the morning or later in the day? Um, we've operationalized morning and later in the day by saying 9 till 10, 7 till 8. And we've operationalized efficient by saying, it doesn't necessarily say it on here, um, it just says productivity. So this isn't very well operationalized. What we could say is the number of toys made. Another way we could measure it would be um, the, observe them and measure the amount of time that they spend staring into space. We could measure um, efficient in a couple of different ways. The same thing with this bottom one. We could um, record the amount of answers they got right, or we could amount, count the amount of times they guessed wrong. Two different ways of measuring memory, um, and they might give us different results. Exactly what we are measuring, um, or how we measure it, will affect the results. So if we were looking for things like intelligence, 
we have to decide on exactly how we are going to measure intelligence and then that might be something that we have to defend later on and say okay so I didn't take this into account but this is the reason why um, so again operationalizing is stating exactly how you're going to measure something um, a couple of examples here that we did in class asking how exactly you would operationalize these things um, you have to have a think about them and see how we would measure things like stress what signs do people show when they're stressed an easy way to measure any of these things would just be to ask people we ask people how stressed they were about exams on a scale of 1 to 10 1 being not very stressed 10 being very stressed a hypothesis is kind of the next thing a hypothesis is a prediction um, it is your prediction of what is going to happen in your experiment what will the results be and there's two different main types there's an alternative hypothesis and this is where we make a prediction about how the IV will affect the DV so for example if we were looking at music on memory we might say that students who revised with music on would recall less information than those who revised in silence yeah we are making a prediction that one group will do better than another and um, the null hypothesis is the opposite a null hypothesis is you making the prediction that there will be no difference the IV whether it's music or no music will have no effect on the results of the memory test things like that so the alternative hypothesis predicts a difference the null hypothesis predicts no difference um, there are two types of alternative hypothesis um, sorry first up when you write an experimental hypothesis or an alternative one and um, those are the exact same things experimental and alternative you say the IV will affect the DV um, that's why you have to make sure you know what the IV and the DV are so that you are doing this right so there are two types of alternative hypothesis so there are one tailed hypothesis which is a concrete prediction where you say a certain group um, result will go up or down or one group will do better than another or worse than another it doesn't matter whether you say better or worse if you're predicting one group and saying like this group will do better or this group will do worse it's a one-tailed hypothesis so for example if we say that um, listening to music will make people remember more words that's a one-tailed hypothesis because we're saying their score would improve if we say that listening to music would make them remember less words it's still a one-tailed hypothesis because we're still seeing which direction their results go sometimes these are called directional hypotheses one-tailed is a directional hypothesis and a two-tailed is a non-directional hypothesis and a two-tailed hypothesis is when we just say there will be a difference there will be a difference in results between students who listen to music and those who don't listen to music when revising yeah? you're not saying who's going to do better or who's going to do worse just that there will be a difference you're not being directional in what you're saying you're not saying somebody will do better or not um, the null hypothesis as I said earlier is a statement that the IV will not affect the DV um, again we'll have looked at these in class but we can have a look very quickly and see whether they are um, one-tailed or two-tailed there will be a difference in scores on an intelligence test between people who eat fish and those who do not eat fish the IV is whether they eat fish or not the DV is their intelligence and this is a two-tailed hypothesis because it just says there will be a difference it doesn't predict which one is going to do better just that there will be a difference there will be a relationship between extroversion being outgoing and a preference for loud music again the IV even though it's not stated very clearly is extroversion or introversion whether you're outgoing or not and the DV is your preference for loud music again this would be a two-tailed hypothesis because we just say there is a relationship we're not saying that those who are extroverted will prefer loud music or vice versa people will remember more words in a foreign language if the information is presented in a picture form rather than words alone IV is picture form or words alone DV is how many words are remembered and this will be a one-tailed hypothesis because we use the word more there so we're saying one group will do better than another an extraneous variable is another type of variable so remember we've got the IV which is the thing that we change that's the condition that we are in control of whether it's music or no music and the DV is what we are measuring an extraneous variable oh sorry call on two percent back um, we assume that in our investigation the IV is the thing that causes or affects the DV 
whether listening to music or no music will make affect in some way your ability on a test. If we use this example, if um, let's say we're studying if the number of hours spent revising affects the grade that you achieve. The IV in this case would be the number of hours spent revising and uh, whether you revise many hours or few. Again, we might operationalize that a bit better in an actual experiment and specify number of hours and things like that. But for this example, we'll just say lots of few. The DV is the grade achieved. Um, how well you do on your end of your exams. An extraneous variable is anything else that affects these results. So anything other than the IV, other than the hours spent revising, that could affect the results of the grade that you achieve. So it could be your intelligence. It could be which class you're in. It could be which teacher you've got. It could be um, whether you end up having to work lots of hours um, or whether you have lots of coursework, things like that. Anything else which affects the results other than the IV is an EV, an extraneous variable. And um, there are two types of extraneous variable. There are situational variables such as something about the situation like the weather, noise level in the room, anything about the environment which might affect the results. So for example, which class you're in, which teacher you have, those are situational variables um, which could affect the results. And this might include experimenter effects, which we'll talk about at another point. But basically, any effect the experimenter has on you if the person giving you your test is drop dead gorgeous, then that might affect how well you do on that test. And um, that will be a situational variable. The participant variable is another type of extraneous variable. And that's something about the participant, like intelligence. So both of these are types of extraneous variable. One where the situation has caused the change and one where the participant themselves causes the change. Um, a quick mention of kind of this is these are extraneous variables. It's an extraneous variable if it might cause a difference in the results or if it might cause a change in the results. Um, it is called a confounding variable if it has. So the extraneous variables are things that we think might cause an effect or might have. A confounding variable is when we know that it definitely has. Right, so that's IVs, DVs, the different types of hypotheses, and extraneous variables covered in this video. Thanks very much.